Uh, say that I'm very happy to be here, so thanks the organizing for an opportunity uh, to come. So I'm going to talk about uh, our joint work with Evgeny Dimitrov, uh, about cert certain uh, universality type results for uh, discrete log gases. And I will start with the uh, definition of the main object of our study. So it's the following class of uh, ensembles. So what we do, we fix a finite uh, set uh, S of uh, real numbers, a parameter, uh, a natural parameter N, uh, and uh, a function W on the set S, which we'll call the weight function. So just like non-negative non uh, uh, function on the set S. And we consider the uh, probability measure on the set of all n tuples uh, of elements from S uh, of the following form. So we have the uh, interaction uh, of the van der Mond type here, and then the product of the weight, uh, which depend on the uh, uh, on this, uh, uh, which we'll call locations Li's separately. And the uh, uh, the set S that we will consider has the following form. So it will depend on two parameters. Uh, Q and U, they are both real. Q is from 0 to 1. Uh, U is also from 0 to 1. And uh, uh, X permit, uh, is, a, uh, is an integer which per, uh, parameterizes this set. So uh, in, uh, in the context of uh, orthogonal polynomials, uh, this type of set is usually called quadratic lattice. So that's where the uh, name comes from. Uh, okay, so um, what we are concerned with, uh, we are concerned uh, with the study of the uh, law of large numbers and the uh, fluctuations of the linear statistics of this type of ensembles uh, for quite a general class of weight functions. Mm -hmm. The Vanderbilt is in Li, not in Q to the Li. Uh, yeah, the, 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 um, uh, Li are points of the type q to the power minus xi plus uh, uq okay. to the power. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so uh, yeah. In particular, the examples of such ensembles when we set u equals to zero are all uh, classical uh, q uh, uh, polynomials from SK scheme. So they're orthogonal. Um, polynomial ensembles uh, which are uh, associated with those weight functions. Uh, okay, so uh, one of the uh, uh, examples which motivated uh, our consideration uh, comes from a, a certain uh, version uh, of the tiling model on a hexagon. Uh, yeah, so it uh, would be again different from the one which was considered uh, just before. So uh, uh, here we have the, uh, so we'll, we'll consider uh, a non-uniform measure on the tilings uh, as an example uh, where uh, as an example of a model where such type of ensembles appear, but uh, uh, the content would be quite different from what uh, was in the uh, first talk. So uh, again, we have uh, 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 we have the Lozenstiling uh, of uh, of a hexagon, and here it would be important uh, that uh, the uh, this configuration of uh, uh, tiles we can view as a th uh, 3D uh, picture, and um, we assign the so-called uh, height function. So it's uh, very similar; uh, it's, it's basically the same function that uh, 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 that appeared in the talk by Professor Van Merbeke. But in, in the language of Rosenstiling, the height function has a natural interpretation. So what happens is that we assign um, integers to all the uh, lattice points inside the hexagon in such a manner that this uh, well integer just represents the height of the corresponding um, platform over the uh, floor level where the floor level uh, is uh, like a zero here like so this is like the the floor level so every uh, node has uh, uh, is, is assigned the integer number which uh, is called the height function 
Uh, okay, so uh, uh, the type of measures which uh, uh, fall into the framework uh, that we consider are the following types. So <clears throat> the probability of a tile uh, has this uh, Gibbs structure where it's the weight of the tile uh, divided by uh, the uh, constant z, which is uh, the partition function. And the types of measures uh, 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 which we analyze uh, have the following, uh, could be of the following form. So the, uh, the first example is just the uniform measure uh, when the weight of uh, uh, every uh, vertical tile uh, is uh, equal uh, uh, just to one. Uh, the second type of measure is uh, when again the weight of the tiling is given uh, as a product of the weights of all uh, vertical uh, tiles, so they're like uh, they're uh, light blue in the picture, but then uh, the weight of uh, at, uh, of every tile is given as q to the power minus j, where j is the uh, topmost coordinate uh, of the tile. Okay, so uh, in this case, uh, uh, if we just combine uh, all the uh, products over the vertical tiles uh, in uh, columns, what we get is the, uh, that the you know, weight of a tiling would be given uh, as some constant uh, times Q to the minus volume, where volume refers to the number of uh, cubes uh, you see in the three-dimensional uh, picture of the tile. Uh, so in uh, yeah, so in this uh, in the case of the tiling which uh, is drawn there, uh, what you get is eight for the volume. Uh, so the number of unit cubes uh, in the like corner of the room. Uh, and the uh, measure uh, uh, which will be connected to this uh, quadratic lattices uh, can be uh, uh, can be uh, defined in the following way, where uh, <clears throat> kappa is in principle uh, a complex parameter. Uh, so the weight of the uh, vertical uh, tile would be given as uh, this, uh, again, quadratic form, uh, kappa uh, times q to the power j minus kappa inverse q to the power minus j. Uh, this type of measures, they appeared, uh, uh, they were like first introduced in the work by Gordon, uh, Gordon and Reigns, uh, and the, the result that they proved uh, is the connection between uh, this type of uh, measures. Uh, one of the results in their paper is the connection between this type of measures and the uh, disc, uh, discrete orthogonal ensembles, which uh, goes as uh, follows. So, uh, uh, yeah, so uh, first I, uh, I wanted to uh, mention that uh, for this type of measures, even for uh, like uh, for the third uh, kind where we have uh, the presence of two parameters, uh, Q and kappa, uh, the, still the same type of the behavior um, uh, as like for the uni for uniform case uh, we see for a typical tile. So here we would have only uh, two types uh, of uh, uh, of areas. For the typical tile, we'll have the liquid region and uh, the frozen uh, areas uh, next to the uh, corners of the hexagon, but now uh, the shape of the liquid region uh, can be quite different, uh, depending on the uh, interplay of the parameters of uh, Q, uh, of the parameters Q and kappa. Uh, also, uh, actually, to well, to ensure that the probability measure is is well defined, there should be so, uh, there should be certain. Uh, uh, Restrictions made on the parameter kappa, uh, uh, depending on the sides of the hexagon. Uh, but still, like kappa can be quite general. In particular, it can be imaginary, and the measure will still uh, make sense. So uh, one of the uh, motivations to actually like go and introduce uh, uh, more parameters uh, is from the following. Uh, Observations, uh, which so far is, is uh, uh, analyzed only on the level of uh, simulation. So seemingly, uh, when you uh, introduce the parameter uh, kappa to be uh, uh, 
so that kappa squared is minus one, and uh, a q goes to uh, one uh, slowly, then seemingly there's like a, a different type of the uh, limit shape phenomenon, uh, which uh, one observes so far on, uh, on the simulations, uh, which we see on the left picture, uh, compared to what you get when q goes to, uh, when q goes faster to one on the picture in the right. Oh, uh, on the right, so uh, yeah, one of the goals of our work is like uh, to be able to analyze the picture uh, with this, uh, so like a very uh, regular formation on the left for using the methods which we uh, uh, which we have now. So it's one of our future uh, projects. Uh, okay, so uh, now, uh, now I'm going back to this uh, connection between the tiling model with uh, such measures and uh, uh, orthogonal polynomial ensemble. So I'll use the like uh, same uh, perspective as taken in the uh, as, it, as it was taken in the previous talk uh, with the uh, fine transformation of the hexagon. So, and uh, again, uh, we, uh, it's convenient to work with the ensemble of uh, non-intersecting non tabs. And now what we'll do, we'll uh, fix a section uh, of this uh, picture. So say uh, t is equal, uh, is, uh, is equal to three here. Uh, and then we are interested uh, in the uh, configuration of the uh, points of intersection uh, at a given, uh, uh, at a given value of uh, t. Uh, and then the result uh, uh, from this paper I mentioned uh, says that uh, for like the, uh, uh, for the measure like with this parameter q and kappa, uh, the probability of a given conf uh, configuration is exactly given by uh, this uh, uh, type of orthogonal polynomial ensemble where um, uh, well, uh, here, sigma of xi uh, dislocation on the quadratic lattice. Mm? Ah, okay, oops, sorry, thank you. Uh, yeah, so the, um, the lattice points are given exactly uh, in this form and parameter u, uh, which we had before, uh, depends on kappa and the uh, length of the uh, sides of the hexagon. Uh, yeah, so uh, in particular, uh, it means that uh, our, our results uh, uh, about the fluctuations would give the results for the fluctuations of the height function uh, for this uh, tiling model. Okay, uh, so, uh, okay, so let me uh, talk a little bit about the uh, uh, known uh, uh, results and previous work, so this uh, type of questions uh, uh, about the low flash numbers and central limit theorem uh, has been extensively studied um, for the case of the uniform measure and uh, the, like the measure with parameter Q, so Q, uh, the measure proportional to uh, Q minus volume. Uh, and uh, the central limit theorem was also investigated uh, in the uh, case uh, of the uniform measure uh, for a large class of domains uh, for both lozenge and uh, domino tilings uh, by now. Uh, but, uh, uh, well, the precise results uh, uh, for like the measure of, uh, uh, of the second and third, and third kind for parameter Q, uh, Q and Q, 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 uh, Q to the kappa are not like present in, uh, well, uh, I, well, actually for the case of the hexagon, even the low large numbers wasn't, uh, uh, wasn't uh, rigorously done for uh, these two parameter uh, uh, generalization of the, uh, uniform measure. Uh, <clears throat> so, well, uh, so that's, uh, yeah, so that's the, like, part of uh, what uh, we cover uh, with this approach. Uh, so let me state uh, the results. So uh, we'll fix uh, a parameter uh, uh, Q uh, uh, in zero and one and uh, parameter M. So M um, uh, encodes the length of the, uh, of the interval where our particles can live. Uh, we also uh, fix uh, 
parameter u. So now I need to explain what is the type of the limit regime that we are interested in. So uh, we uh, will take the sequence qn, uh, mn and un of the parameters, uh, such that uh, uh, qn goes to one, uh, mn uh, linearly uh, grows with n, uh, and, uh, and, uh, u, uh, and un goes to some, uh, some fixed value u. And uh, we'll first study the low flash numbers uh, in terms of the empirical measure, which is the uh, sum of delta functions uh, in, in the locations of the uh, particles Li. Uh, so mu n, uh, yeah, so we have this uh, sequence of measures mu n. Uh, and uh, now uh, I will talk about the assumptions on the weight function. So uh, uh, w one of the main purposes of this uh, approach that I'm presenting is, uh, is being able to handle a uh, general class of, uh, of weight functions. So uh, the assumptions that we need uh, uh, from the weight function are of the following sort. So they are very similar to the, uh, uh, to the counterpart that uh, uh, the counterpart in the random matrix theory that uh, people assume about the uh, uh, about the uh, log gases uh, on the real line. So we assume that uh, W is given in this form where we call V the potential. So uh, uh, we assume it's uh, uh, continuous, bounded, uh, and uh, the derivative is also bounded. So here's like the precise uh, statement, uh, but uh, that's quite a natural uh, type of the assumptions uh, to make uh, or in this uh, type of problems about the uh, weight function. Uh, so it's like, yeah, so we, we need uh, certain analytical properties uh, to, uh, uh, to prove the following. So the first, uh, result is the low flash number, so we prove that uh, the, uh, the, the convergence of the empirical measures to a certain uh, limit measure mu, and the uh, uh, yeah, so, and the proof follows uh, the, uh, uh, the, the variational principle approach, which is uh, quite classical by now, uh, for this type of uh, uh, problems. Uh, the only like, subtlety is to handle this uh, uh, discreteness, uh, but essentially uh, all the arguments go through. Uh, for the low flash numbers. Uh, but then uh, the interesting part is the following uh, result. Uh, regarding the uh, fluctuations uh, of uh, linear statistics um, for the general class of the weight function. So what we prove is uh, the following. So we fix uh, uh, a set of polynomials, F1 through Fm, and we consider the linear statistics corresponding to those polynomials, and then we prove that uh, this uh, like random, uh, uh, this uh, linear statistics, LFI, converge jointly uh, in the sense of moment, in, in the sense of moments to a Gaussian uh, uh, vector with an explicit covariance, where the covariance has this form, so, uh, where, oops, sorry, where the, uh, uh, where alpha one and beta i are the endpoints of the uh, interval uh, of the support uh, of the limit measure mu. So, uh, in this sense, uh, uh, this is, uh, well, uh, this is a universal covariance, meaning that it uh, doesn't depend on the details uh, uh, about the potential V, uh, and uh, uh, more, mo moreover, like it, uh, it is exactly uh, the same as uh, its continuous uh, analog. Uh, well, so yeah, so uh, a priori, we like we were not sure that uh, this is uh, what is going to happen in, uh, when we add these extra parameters uh, Q and U. So yeah, so we uh, didn't have. Uh, a heuristic argument why we uh, expect uh, to get the same uh, type of the uh, limit behavior. Uh, okay, any questions? Uh, I have a, I have a mm -hmm. So this uh, covariance, mm -hmm. you have it looks very um, uh, reminiscent of the, what the situation on the line 
Yes. Mm -hmm. it, it's exactly the same. Uh, yeah, it's, it's just like exactly the same. Yeah, so it's exactly the same covariance as, uh, as in Johansson's work in particular. Uh, Question. Mm -hmm. Do you know um, the support properties of the limiting measure? Uh, uh, so like, I like I hear uh, things uh, for the question. Uh, so here in like the way I formulate the uh, theorem, uh, uh, it's uh, for one band case, but we also like study like m m uh, we can extend the results to like multi cut uh, version as well. So it's like one cut uh, uh, statement. Mm -hmm. Sometimes in discrete or polynomials, the, the equilibrium measure satisfies an upper constraint. Does that come in? Yes. When uh, yeah, So uh, so uh, it uh, comes in when you study the law of large numbers. So you need to like the way you define the space where you optimize your functional. That's like part of the constraint on the space uh, co coming from the discreteness uh, of the model. Uh, okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, I wanted to say that like the whole story can actually be uh, generalized to uh, yeah to general beta setup, uh, uh, meaning that like we can define a certain class of uh, <coughs> measures on uh, like uh, uh, on discrete ensembles of uh, particles, uh, which in the limit uh, in certain continuous limit would uh, uh, would be. Uh, reminiscent to uh, general beta log gases on the line. So uh, uh, the interesting thing is that, uh, well, the definition of the measure would look like at first uh, quite scary uh, because, well, it's not just, uh, uh, well, you, you do not just change uh, the power of the Wondermond. Uh, you need to do something else. Uh, and uh, uh, there are also like some algebraic Reasons which I'll briefly mention why uh, it's important to uh, to like change the uh, type of the interaction. So I uh, here for general beta, uh, what is happening is that we uh, will define the measure through Q gamma functions. So again, we have these parameters Q, U, uh, and M. So. Uh, uh, as before, uh, and then uh, this just um, uh, the reminder what the Q gamma function is in terms of the Q, uh, Q uh, polygamma symbol. So now the uh, uh, points of the, of the lattice are of the following form. So uh, they uh, well, it's again the quadratic lattice where L i now uh, is 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 not precisely uh, at an integer location, but at a shifted integer location by, uh, by i to the, uh, by i minus one times theta, where theta is uh, some parameter. So um, I, uh, th uh, the parameter uh, theta is the analog of uh, beta, and uh, well, the correspondence uh, uh, is the following, so beta would be uh, two times theta. Uh, so, uh, and uh, yeah, so we, like uh, the measure, um, is defined on the uh, n tuples of uh, Li's, uh, where Li's are now given in this form. Uh, and the measure has the following uh, interaction uh, term now given, uh, well, as a product of uh, eight gamma functions. Uh, uh, and then, like there is uh, this uh, product of the weights, uh, which uh, uh, which again is computed separately at every location. Uh, why uh, uh, it should uh, uh, resemble the general beta case of the continuous log gases? Well, it just um, uh, follows from the certain uh, asymptotics of the Q gamma functions. Uh, so if we consider Q going to one, uh, then well, if we just uh, take this limit of the previous uh, uh, of the previous expression, then we exactly recover uh, the type of the interaction uh, that you get on the line. So at least in, in the continuous limit, it it agrees uh, with the. Uh, what you expect to see, uh, and also, uh, well, the main tool which I will like talk about next, which allows us to uh, analyze these models, is uh, like something which uh, is called discrete loop equations. Uh, well, uh, which uh, uh, 
the presence of uh, reach for this type of measures kind of like uh, manifests in a sense that uh, it can be the right analog to consider uh, in the discrete world. And also like uh, this type of measure has like an interesting connection to symmetric functions. So in particular, so this type of uh, interactions comes like in certain, uh, well, in the Cauchy formula for curving the polynomials. So it's not like completely, uh, well, yeah, out of place. Uh, this type of uh, interaction. Uh, yeah, so uh, let me just um, uh, uh, talk about what uh, was known uh, in, in previous works on the uh, uh, discrete uh, log uh, So yeah, so the law of large numbers uh, using the uh, variational approach was first studied by Johansson. And then the central limit theorem was uh, first done uh, in, uh, well, in the class of uh, um, special cases. By special cases, I mean uh, the uh, like special choice of the weight function, so using the uh, integrable techniques. Uh, and also like all this, uh, uh, results are for just like usual uh, integer lattice. And then there was a breakthrough paper by uh, Borodin, Gorin, and Guillaume uh, where they generalized uh, the approach to be able to handle uh, general potential uh, on the uh, integer lattice uh, and uh, also uh, uh, well, they, they considered uh, like also a general beta uh, version of the discrete ensembles uh, on uh, integer letters. So, uh, and uh, like uh, our work basically follows the footsteps uh, of uh, uh, that paper with the idea of how one can, uh, well, um, how one can extend these particular tools uh, to be able to uh, study uh, other types uh, of ensembles as well. So uh, let me now uh, explain what is the main ingredient of, uh, uh, of, of the whole, like what's the main hero of this story. So the main hero is, uh, so the, uh, like this breakthrough which, uh, um, which happened in, in that paper was due to the fact that, um, uh, that uh, they uh, introduced a, a version, like, a, a discrete version of the loop equations, which uh, stand behind uh, the proofs of the uh, uh, global fluctuation uh, type results in the uh, continuous setting on the real line. So um, it goes back to the work of Johansson uh, on the uh, uh, central limit theorem for random matrix the uh, in random matrix theory uh, for uh, general beta uh, log gases. So here we introduce the notation uh, of the, uh, so this is the resolvent. Uh, so it's uh, the weighted sum uh, of one over Z minus Li, where Li are the locations of the particles. And then like the uh, main ingredient of the proof is the following statement, oops, uh, is the following statement. So it's, uh, it's a certain uh, function. So uh, in the limit as n goes to infinity, uh, uh, this type uh, of statement uh, gives a certain functional uh, equation on the Celsius transform of the limit measure, which allows to analyze uh, further uh, the fluctuations. And uh, in the continuous uh, uh, setup, uh, this type of, of, uh, of uh, equations is obtained uh, by, um, is, uh, by, well, uh, there are like many ways to obtain it. One of those is, uh, the, uh, like, uh, is, is a clever integration by parts. Uh, well, in the uh, like the the problem in the discrete uh, world is that uh, well um, uh, to obtain uh, this uh, like a version of the discrete loop equation, it turned out that uh, there like uh, it, it comes from a very different. Uh, uh, side, so there's like, a, well, at least we don't know, there's like no easy way to do the uh, integration by part or like a dynamic argument to obtain a version of the discrete loop, uh, uh, of, the, of the discrete loop 
equation. So uh, yeah, so there needed to be some other ideas to uh, obtain this type of uh, of the. Uh, equations uh, such that um, in the limit it would give a functional equation on the STLTS transform of the limit measure. And the analog of uh, this loop equation uh, is formulated in the following way. So first we need to make a couple of the assumptions. Uh, so we, we assume that, uh, well, so that our like intervals where the points live uh, 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 inside some given uh, set M. And we need to assume the following uh, analyticity uh, of the weights, meaning that if we uh, take the ratio of the weight functions uh, at the uh, c uh, computed at the point Z and the, and the shifted point uh, uh, by Q, uh, then the ratio is given uh, by uh, 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 by a ratio of uh, two analytic functions, which we uh, call phi, phi, uh, phi plus and phi minus. So this is just a definition of uh, phi plus and phi minus in this form. And we assume that they are analytic in Z uh, in this domain. And we also uh, need uh, a certain vanishing assumptions on the boundary. On the boundary, so that uh, functions phi plus and phi minus they vanish um, uh, uh, just outside of the interval where particles live, and just at the beginning. And then uh, the uh, analog of the loop equation is the following statement: So if we define uh, a function uh, R n of z as uh, the following linear combination uh, of certain observables with respect to our measure uh, P, then uh, the statement is that this uh, function R is analytic in the same neighborhood as the functions uh, phi plus and phi minus, which are defined in terms of this, uh, like phi small and uh, uh, phi small minus and phi small plus. Uh, in which sense it's an equation, it, it's, it's an uh, uh, well, it's in the sense that if we uh, now integrate uh, this uh, equality around any closed circle, we'll get zero on the left. Okay, so uh, so it turns out that uh, like a nice analog uh, in the discrete setting would be a statement about a certain uh, certain uh, um, behavior of observables uh, with respect to our measure. So in the case of the uniform measure, uh, what we'll see, uh, we'll just have uh, like, a, so if Q goes to one and uh, uh, U is equal to zero, the type of the, of, of the observable that we'll have is just the ratio of the characteristic polynomial and shifted characteristic polynomial. So it would be just, uh, oops. It would be just the type of the observables that we'll have as of this form. And the second one is so here's the product over all n. So this is in uh, the uh, case uh, of just uh, uh, it's it's the case of the integer lattice. Okay, so uh, why this type of statements, although like uh, it looks very uh, well simple on the first glance, and also uh, to prove uh, that uh, well, this uh, combination of uh, observables is uh, analytic if the coefficients are, uh, is, uh, well, once it's written, it's very simple. So we just basically the argument, uh, you compute the residues. So uh, like the uh, non-trivial part is, is uh, to get an idea that that's the right thing to consider. 
Uh, and moreover, like in terms of the analytic arguments, uh, it also, uh, well, once you have uh, this type of uh, statement, then uh, basically what happens is like to study the, the, the fluctuations, you use the same techniques uh, as in random matrix theory. So like following, uh, well, uh, the work uh, of Gianni and uh, uh, Boro and uh, Krischer Bauer and uh, Sh uh, and Sherbinov, for example. So, uh, so we, you like uh, you, you use like basically the same analytic approach, uh, but uh, like the the core uh, is uh, uh, is the property of this like very simple expression. So uh, 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 next, I will uh, explain where it comes from and uh, uh, why it's uh, like the analog. So first, uh, why it's the analog? Uh, well, uh, we'll need to uh, look at the uh, asymptotic uh, uh, expansion of these observables. Uh, and uh, what we'll see is that uh, if we look at the Taylor expansions, then uh, uh, we get that uh, in the like uh, the first term that we'll get is exa is exactly the Stiltz transform of the limit measure, and the second term that we get is the difference between the uh, uh, the resolvent and the uh, Stiltz transform of the limit measure. Okay, so uh, once you look at that uh, expression. Um, uh, 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 in the limit, you, you precisely get a certain functional uh, equation uh, on the uh, Stiltz transform of the limit measure. And moreover, if you uh, consider the low order uh, expansion, you also get your hands on the uh, quantities of this type, which are responsible for the fluctuations. Uh, okay, so. Uh, so here it's what you get uh, when uh, you look at the first order term. So basically uh, in the uh, limit, uh, if you take uh, the, uh, uh, the limit on the left and on the right, uh, you get a quadratic uh, uh, equation on the exponent uh, of the Stiltz transform. So if you know the left-hand side, uh, you can just explicitly write down the density of the limit measure from this equation. And uh, that's exactly what happens in all classical cases the, uh, uh, or the, of orthogonal polynomials. You actually know explicitly what the left-hand side is. So there's a way to compute what uh, R is. Uh, so yeah, so uh, just from, uh, from this, uh, just from this line, uh, using the properties of the CLTS transform, you obtain the uh, density of the limit measure uh, through the, uh, the the limit of R and the functions uh, and, and and the limits of the functions phi plus and phi minus. Now, how do you know what uh, R is? So uh, and and also like uh, where uh, or one of the places where this uh, combination, the the linear combination of the of the observables comes from, uh, is through uh, the uh, study of the discrete Riemann-Hilbert problems. So yeah, so uh, uh, this is uh, about the uh, uh, this step is the following. So we consider. Uh, a, a, Matrix. Uh, uh, so this is the definition of the discrete Riemann-Hilbert problem. So we consider a matrix omega. It's a two by two matrix. So we like that's the setup that we'll need. Um, so th this matrix is a, a matrix valid function on a finite subset uh, X uh, of real numbers. And uh, uh, it has the following properties. The entries of this uh, matrix are meromorphic functions with the most simple poles uh, at uh, the points of the set X. And uh, the residues at those poles uh, satisfy the following uh, jump residue condition. So if we, if we consider the residue, uh, so M is called the solution of the discrete, uh, of the discrete Riemann-Hilbert problem if the following identity holds. So the, the residue computed at any point x of, the, uh, of our set uh, 
uh, capital X uh, is given as the limit of this product, uh, of the product of matrix M with the uh, uh, jump matrix omega. So it's the discrete analog of the Riemann-Hilbert problem. And then uh, the following statement holds that uh, if you, uh, like, uh, um, now, uh, so uh, this is the, the, the formulation in the uh, setup of the, uh, uh, of the quadratic lattice. So now uh, if we have this set uh, S, uh, which is the quadratic lattice, and we define the jump matrix uh, uh, omega in the following way, so where W is the weight of our ensemble, so just an uh, important uh, matrix of this form, and we also fix the, uh, the, the asymptotic property of this matrix at infinity. Oh, sorry, this is a type, it should be uh, phi. Uh, yes, so it, it should be this argument here going to infinity. Uh, then uh, if we define the matrix uh, A of Z as a certain uh, conjugation of the diagonal matrix uh, uh, phi, uh, phi minus and phi, uh, phi plus, so those are, uh, those are the same uh, uh, coefficients uh, phi minus and phi plus are the coefficients which appeared in the Nikrasov uh, uh, equation. So then uh, uh, this matrix is analytic, and moreover, the trace of, of this matrix uh, of this matrix is precisely given uh, as the linear combination uh, on the right hand side of the Nikrasov's. E equation. So uh, this computation, uh, so it's a very simple computation to, uh, to get this equality between the trace and uh, this linear combination, and it uses um, uh, the, uh, the explicit formulas for such observables uh, uh, from a paper by, uh, uh, by uh, Deift and uh, Strahov. Okay, so that's uh, one of the places where this linear combination comes from, and uh, also uh, this uh, property allows to compute uh, the, uh, the value of function R uh, through the matrix A for all classical cases. So what it turns uh, to be is that if we, uh, for classical cases where we have the uh, uh, the, the, the discrete orthogonal polynomials, and we consider the uh, difference equation. So here it's written in, in, uh, in the case of, uh, for example, Kuraka polynomials. Uh, then it turns out that, uh, uh, that uh, this, uh, the, the limit of uh, R uh, is exactly uh, the limit of this coefficient uh, here. Uh, from the discrete uh, uh, difference equations. And so basically, uh, well, in the case of the uh, tiling model with the two parameters, Q and kappa, uh, yeah, to find the limit shape, you just well, need to look at the ASCII, uh, at, at, at the book on the, uh, uh, in the book about the ASCII scheme and like uh, look what this, uh, uh, look up what is this coefficient, then you know the value, uh, the limit behavior of function R the limit behavior of function R. Uh, yes, so, uh, and uh, I will, yeah, so how many minutes do I have? Eight. Eight, okay. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, so, I will, uh, uh, so uh, here I want you to, uh, to present uh, the uh, version uh, of uh, this loop equation for general theta. So, uh, well, the statement is of the very similar uh, uh, flavor. So you, uh, and even like the functions phi plus and phi minus are the same. So you, you again consider a certain linear combination of the observables with respect to this measure with the Q-gamma functions, and it turns out that the uh, left-hand side uh, is again analytic, so all the, all, all the poles cancel. Um, and uh, well, this allows to handle, uh, well, that's like, uh, in a sense, um, for us was a manifestation that this uh, type of uh, interaction through, through, uh, through gamma functions was the right object to consider. And also, uh, well, this is uh, like the core uh, object to, uh, uh, that we work with to, to prove the, uh, the results uh, about the fluctuations for general theta as well. 
uh, yeah, and I think I'll just, uh, yeah, I'll skip this part and uh, finish with the uh, with the uh, pictures about what you uh, get uh, for the like uh, for the limit shape uh, in the case of the tilings uh, with parameters Q and Kappa. So what happens? Um, uh, how do you compute what the limit uh, shape is? So meaning that what's the frozen boundary, the curve separating the uh, frozen regions from the liquid phase. So what you need to do is that, uh, well, you need to perform a, a change of variable, so a deformation from the hexagon to this third picture here uh, using the, uh, well, the, basically the quadratic lattice uh, substitution. And then seemingly uh, what happens is that uh, 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 the same as in the work of Kenyon and Okunikov, there is the, a unique uh, curve of, uh, of degree two such that uh, it uh, touches all the sides. And uh, that's gonna be an ellipse here. And then uh, to get the limit shape, you, you take a pullback. So, uh, so uh, I'll conjecture that like once you just change the lattice, uh, what you need to do, uh, you, you, you need to perform a certain uh, transformation on the variables uh, of your domain and then like the, uh, the curve which will give the frozen boundary should be uh, again an algebraic, uh, a unique algebraic curves uh, uh, um, such that uh, it touches all the boundaries and there's a, a condition on the degree of its dual. So very similar to, yeah, so basically the same, uh, the same, uh, like, yeah, the same statement as uh, Kenyon and Okunikov have, but just on the transformed domain. Uh, yeah, so thank you for your attention. So we have plenty of time for questions. Can you handle uh, rational functions instead of by orthogonal ensembles instead of uh, orthogonal polynomials? Um, well, I don't have the formulas, but my suspicion that uh, it sh should be possible using, uh, well, uh, there should be a version of loop equations for, for, uh, for them, but I don't know, but I would suspect it exists. Yeah. <clears throat> More questions? Can so it's the uh, same question I asked Arno. So from your methods, can you study the fluctuations? of the boundary between the frozen and temperate region? Uh, well, uh, there is a paper by uh, Gianne and Huang, uh, like in the um, setup of integer lattice, where using, uh, starting from the loop equation, they prove uh, the uh, rigidity estimates, and then by comparison argument with the results by uh, Burgat, Erdosh, and Yao, they uh, get uh, uh, the universal s uh, statement about the Tracy Vidum fluctuations on the H4, like discrete log gases. Uh, so I think like, uh, well, so, so, uh, so I would expect, uh, I, it's like a lot of analytic work, but I, I would expect that uh, with this, uh, uh, like uh, basically the, the input is there, like this uh, equations, and uh, I would expect that the same uh, universality result holds, basically by like uh, through the same arguments so also. <clears throat> More questions? I do mm -hmm. have one. So there is this discrete Riemann-Hilbert problem mm -hmm. that you analyzed. Mm -hmm. And in some cases, these discrete Riemann-Hilbert problems are connected to discrete Banner equations. Mm -hmm. Do you know if in these cases there is something? Uh, there is a connection, uh, uh, yeah, so basically what happens, uh, like if you look at this matrix, uh, it's, uh, oh, sorry. Oh, where is it? Um, uh. <coughs> Uh, 
Okay, so yeah, so if you look at this, uh, at the definition of uh, this matrix A, uh, well, you can uh, define, uh, well, you can actually uh, define a discrete dynamics on it uh, in such a way that uh, uh, if you consider a modelized space of the matrices with the fixed singularity data, of, uh, so here like the singularity, uh, yeah, so well, here A doesn't uh, have singularities, what you need to do, you need to, instead of uh, considering this uh, diagonal matrix, you would consider phi minus divided by phi plus, then like it will have uh, singularities, um, uh, and uh, uh, the uh, this discrete dynamics would be equivalent to Penleve dynamics. Uh, yeah, so there's like a precise connection with, with discrete Penleve. <coughs> Any other questions? No. If not, let's thank the speaker again. Thanks.